Now let's talk about PBX hardware. So one of the things that, uh, that made me do the, this series is that there was just a lot of misinformation, and that misinformation is often being given out by the companies that are trying to sell you on one particular type of solution. So there are a lot of people that will say, you know, within the cloud hosting side, oh, you don't, you don't want to get a local PBX because the, the local PBX, you know, you have to spend like 6000 or $10,000 on a server, and then you have to spend money on cards, and they have to spend money on maintenance and blah, blah, blah. Now, as I said, my phone system, uh, it rings off the hook all day, all night. We're constantly placing calls, constantly receiving calls, constantly reading the voicemails from it, and it works just fine with four phones. And I want to show you what my business phone system, which never has problems, is, is working off of. So let me just get the... Okay, so this here is the computer that I've been using for my business phone system for the past several years. And this is what it costs. This is a Core 2 Duo that you can buy for $80. So I bought this one of these machines from Tiger Direct a while ago for 80 bucks. I put a new hard drive in it because I was not going to use the original hard drive in a machine that I'm using as a server. And again, th this, this is the thing I want you to understand when it comes to hardware. So c costs for computers have been coming down over the past 10 years. You know, you don't... And also... Uh, a lot of applications haven't really caught up with where computing power has gone. So you don't, you know, unless you're encoding real-time video or playing the latest game, you don't necessarily need the latest computer. A six-year-old computer will do absolutely just fine running a lot of these basic tasks. And because of that, you know, a PBX server doesn't necessarily have to be this $6,000 or $10,000 piece of hardware. I'm not saying that you should use an $80 off-lease Lenovo Core 2 Duo for your company's professional phone system, but the point I'm trying to make is that's what I've been using for mine, and it, and it can deal with on-demand voice recording. So, you know, if somebody starts uh, threatening us and cursing us out and blah, 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 I can hit a little button, and it will record that call. I, I'm able to do that. If I, you know, I'm able to do, do things like visual voicemail where multiple users can check them and play them off of the PBX at the same time. It can handle a bunch of different calls at the same time. And this, is, again, is, is a computer that's $80. So the point I want to get across is, while this may not be the ideal setup, you can totally use an $80 computer in a business phone system environment and really not have to worry about it one bit as long as you replace the old hard drive in it. It's totally possible to use this and actually get things done. And I'm convinced that I could add five or ten lines to this and it will still work just fine. Because again, a PBX server, a server is just a computer that provides services, and a server can be uh, just any computer. It's just a server is a computer that provides services. This is a computer, therefore I can use it for that. Now, let's take a look over at what they say you should use. So let's go over to Free PBX Recommended Hardware. So Free PBX is the system that I use. Now there are two variants of this that I know of. There's standard Free PBX, and then there's Free PBX High Availability. Free PBX high availability is, you know, their, their hardcore, like, amazing version of it. This is the one that's, it's not really meant for people like me. This is, this is what, you, you know, you would use at a police station. This is what you would use at a hospital. This is their, you know, the version of it that's probably not needed by a lot of the people who are going to be watching this video series. And even with their high availability version, this is all they're asking for. They want four gigs, you know, not even minimum, preferred. An i5 class processor or a quad-core Xeon that's in that class, four gigabytes of RAM or greater. And, you know, you, and it's not hard to get that. So if I were to go over to Amazon.com, and I, the reason that I like Lenovo is because they make hardware that is really hard to, really difficult to break. So I can get a quad-core Xeon computer from Lenovo for three hundred forty-nine dollars and seventy-seven cents, you know, and this is this. Let's take a look at the performance of that processor. It's not terrible. It's not the best thing in the world, but it's, you know, it's by all means, it's not an awful processor. And. This is, uh, this is a machine that's actually designed to be a server. This is made for a server environment. Lenovo purchased their computing division from IBM, and they provided very, very high-quality hardware. And, and you, you, could, you could actually spend $350 and get a machine that, that is well set for the high-availability version of free PBX. I'm not saying that you want to only spend $80 or $300. But my point is that you can very easily get all of this done with an $80 computer. An $80 computer 
will run a PBX system just fine. If you want to run, use a lot of users and you want to have a lot of stuff going on, uh, then you can move up to the, you know, you can move up to the big leagues of the $350 server. So the point I want to get across with this video for hardware is that you don't need an expensive computer. When they talk about how you need this huge expensive server to run a PBX system for your small business, you're usually, A, you're, you're dealing with somebody who is talking about the technology of 10 years ago, or B, you're talking to somebody who's trying to, who's just giving you a line of crap to try to sell you a really expensive system. And now again, free PBX themselves, they actually do offer some, uh, they offer some hardware here. So you can actually buy hardware, free PBX hardware, and they do offer some high-end stuff. Let's take a look at this here. Yeah, so you can buy, you, if you want to buy a $6,000 phone system from them because you do have that 1,000 user office, you can, you can do that. They, and they sell these systems, you know, with, uh, with back, you know, with RAID on them and lots of memory. So if you want to get that, you can. But you can also get a system that supports 50 users and 25 calls at a time, which for a small office, for a small office, their cheapest system over here at 579 is overkill, but you know, again, the company that creates the PBX software and distribution and everything themselves are endorsing this piece of hardware that costs $579. And it'll do everything just fine. Now, that's the first part. The first thing that you need is the, is the actual PBX server. The second thing that you're going to need is a switch. So again, when people say you need this crazy expensive hardware to do this, they're often trying to discourage you from paying for the hardware up front so that they can milk you at you know, 40 bucks per extension um, forever. So let's talk about the Switch. Now, all these, fo all these phones, the, they're actually little computers. So every single one of these phones, like the one that's on my desk, that's not actually a, f you know, this is not e technically a phone. This is a little computer that's acting as a phone. So this is the phone that I use. And this phone transmits voice as data over a network. So here's the phone that I use. Now, this transmits voice as data over a network. And like any network, it can be bogged down by people who are doing things with it that they, they, they aren't supposed to. So let's say, if, you, if, you're, if you're on a network with 1,000 users, you can bet that at least one jackass on that network is going to try to download torrents or porn or something on company time and he's not supposed to. Even if you don't have to deal with something like that, maybe your maybe your company is doing a backup. So once a week, it uploads everything to a cloud storage provider for your backup. That's going to eat up your internet connection. Now you don't want for your phones, you know, your phone service that takes up this much data to get destroyed because of something that's using this much data. So what you want to do is you want to have a switch set up that knows how to prioritize traffic that has something called quality of service so that when somebody decides ah we're going to upload our backups uh, you know every at three o'clock every day that every three o'clock every friday your phone service doesn't go to shit because it's not able to transmit the data properly if your network gets bogged down you're going to hear choppy voice communications at worst case scenario calls get dropped best case scenario you just can't hear the other person or you hear every other word or there's latency where you hear them talking uh five seconds after they've actually said something so what you're going to want is a switch that has something called quality, uh, quality of service. You're going to want something that has quality of service on it. So again, you don't want to take all these phones and plug them into a $50 Linksys router. If you take all these phones and you plug them into a $50 Linksys router that you got at Best Buy, they're going to work like shit. So what you're going to want is some type of quality of service switch. Now, I'm not trying to be a Cisco fanboy here, but I've used them before and they work. The thing about Cisco is while they cost a decent amount of money, you know that with almost every product they make, it may not be the best product for the money, but, you know, but the thing with Cisco is you know that it's actually going to work, which is what I like about Cisco. I know that when I, when I purchase it that I'm not going to have a bunch of annoying problems with it. So let's see what we have here. Let's just re So this is a switch that I used to have. This is 24 ports, so you can plug a lot of phones into this. And this switch over here has quality of service. 
So the whole idea here is that, again, with, with the old router that we used to have a long time ago, if somebody started doing something on the internet, the phone calls would still, you know, you would just hear all this uh, dropping and choppiness and junk. We got this switch for $140 and you don't have to worry about that anymore. Now, you don't even need to get a managed switch to do this. You don't, now the difference between a managed switch and an unmanaged switch. A managed switch allows you to log in and change a bunch of settings and do a bunch of cool stuff. Whereas an unmanaged switch is pretty much plug and play, you plug it in, everything just happens to work right out of the box. So even if you're not necessarily a really high-level IT administrator, you don't, you, know, you don't have to be a high-level IT administrator to set up a basic small business phone network so that you know, if somebody starts watching porn or downloading torrents, which again, they should be doing at work anyway, but it happens, that it, doesn't, that it doesn't screw up the phone system. You can just buy a basic switch like this that has good quality of service from a good company, and it will work. And again, I'm talking about this one because this is the switch that we actually used. Now, let's go over phone systems. So we've actually we've gone, over the, the P, we've gone over the hardware that you may want to use for the PBX. We've gone over the hardware that you may want to plug the phones and the PBX into. Now let's go over the actual phones. So the phone that I use here is also a Cisco phone, not to be a Cisco fanboy. There are a few reasons that I like this phone over here. The first is that the display on it looks really, really nice. And we're going to go over that when I actually go into setting up all these individual phones. So I'm going to show you how it is we set them up and how it is they work when we get to the point of plugging them all in. So I like the fact that if I want to transfer somebody or you know, use any of the basic functions on it, let's see if any of these are nice big pictures. Let's see, do you look any good or do you look like crap? Eh, it's kind of, okay. It looks better in person. So for example, sometimes when I'm on a phone call, this will turn to transfer, but you can clearly see the buttons. You can clearly see the names of the extensions. It's very easy to make out everything, which is, you know, you don't, it, it's annoying when you're looking at one of those really old black and white phone interfaces that looks like a Game Boy. You know, when you're looking at something that looks like a Game Boy and you're looking and it's sitting on your desk, maybe on top of a piece of gear, for example, here, my phone used to sit on top of a few pieces of gear, and there's light, so every time I wanted to look at it, I had to do this, or I had to like kind of squint to see, am I hitting transfer, am I hitting hold, am I typing the extension in right? It's kind of annoying. So th this phone is really easy to see. It's fairly affordable when it comes to voice over IP phones. It's not very expensive. It has very good quality of voice and audio, so you know it's very good at this headset is very good at rejecting the noise around it. You can hear everybody loudly. The speakerphone is very good. One of the things I really love about this headset is that it supports Bluetooth and it supports Bluetooth well. So it's it's kind of it was more difficult than I thought to find these headsets that support Bluetooth. So for example. I do a lot of work in a microscope here. So let's say I'm working in the microscope and somebody calls and I'm the only one here. You know, I, it's nice to be able to do this and go, how can I help you and, and work on stuff instead of having to go th do this. Because if I have to pick up the phone and do this, my, work, my work's not getting done. But if I have a Bluetooth headset, I can continue my work and I can continue what I'm doing without being tethered to the phone. So this is a phone that's fairly affordable that has this Bluetooth functionality that I find really valuable. And it also has really, really good range on the Bluetooth feature. So I can walk all the way to the front of the store, which is about 60 or 70 feet away, and I still, ha I still have service. Whereas, you know, if I have my cell phone paired to the same headset and I walk that far away, you'll just hear, you know, device unpaired. So it's, it's, it's good quality with that. And it's also a power over ethernet phone, meaning I can power it from a switch that provides power over ethernet. So the switch that I showed you is not a power over ethernet switch. With that switch, you would have to plug the phone into an outlet. But if I used a uh, power over ethernet switch, let me just see the model of one, one that I'm using right here. So I'm using an SGE2000P. This is power over ethernet switch, meaning that every one of these ports can power a phone or an IP camera. I was lucky enough to find this thing for about $400 in amazing condition. So these phones can be powered directly from the switch. So you only have to have one you only have to have one wire going to your phone instead of two, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it's hard to find information on it. And you'll see that the phone is kind of affordable now. And you, you can get these things for $130. I bought a lot of the ones for here for about 125, 130 bucks. 
and you know, again, if you if you're dealing with with a client that has that is used to the black and white phone where you can barely see the screen, where just basic functions on it like transferring are a bit of a pain in the ass if you're not used to the phone. When they see this, it's it's kind of like a wow, you know, because again, you don't have to read a manual kind of to figure out how it works. It's just it's really obvious because everything is visually there and just it just makes good sense. So. I like those phones for these deployments. So that's pretty much the hardware that I use. It's nothing crazy. It's nothing, you know, nothing super expensive. It's just standard computer, uh, basic Cisco switch, and basic Cisco phones. I, you know, again, I, I don't have the phone with the huge screen and the 15,000 features. I don't buy the phone that is, you know, the, the, the $40, no power over Ethernet, no Bluetooth piece of crap. I think that this is a good middle-of-the-line phone for a lot of deployments because they have a lot of features that you don't find in other phones. They look really nice. They work very well, and that's, that's about that.